Welcome back to The Mining Pod. On today's show, we're rejoined by mining analyst, Anthony Power. We talk about mining stocks ripping into the green, the dangers of debt and dilution, and an outlook for 2023. Welcome back to The Mining Pod. We have Anthony Power, our mining analyst, on the show again today. Anthony, thank you so much for joining. Thanks for having me, A lot going on. Um, Mining stocks have popped to begin the year, which has made a lot of uh, mining equity holders very happy, as they should be. Uh, We see some really big green candles across the board for many miners to add to Bitcoin price also going up. So that's a great highlight. Uh, But of course, we're going to go back through a little bit of December's numbers. There's been a lot of information there. And of course, there's a lot of information on 2022 to go over, but we're solely going to focus today on the mining stock numbers and see how information from last year is transferring into valuations right now, and then what we're expecting for next year. Of course, anything we say on this particular show is not financial advice. We're just going through it from an analytical standpoint based on publicly uh, available information. But I'll hand it off to you, Anthony. Let's just start off talking about mining stock numbers. The first thing I look at is some of these year-to-date performances, uh, which everything is down over a 52-week average, honestly, but over a year-to-date performance from January 1st, we see Greenage is up 220%, Digihost up 186%, Bitfarms 160%, and then the bottom lowest gainer is CleanSpark up 29%, of, and then right behind it is Stronghold at uh, 36%. So a few different valuations there, a few different numbers to look at. I'll hand it over to you. What's your take on the boom in mining equity since the beginning of the year? Well, when we consider the mining stocks in 2022 drops upwards of 80% on average, um, and that's all, all all around the Bitcoin price, to be honest. Um, Bitcoin price peaked, you know, November 2021, reaching the 69,000. And then ever since that date, all the way up until the last week in December, it got down to about fifteen and a half thousand dollars and the mining stocks are literally just you know there's hedge on, on on the bitcoin price um they 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 dropped you know bitcoin price dropped 65 percent they they got eight eight percent but bitcoin price turned um in that last week of december and what we're seeing in january now is we've seen bitcoin increase around about 35 percent uh, looking at today's price uh which is hovering around the twenty three thousand. so good increase for the three weeks of uh, January, and we're seeing the mining stocks literally um, rise on that there, and it's and it's it's welcomed by the by the shareholders, you know these these companies because you know that they, they kind of they've had a tough tough twelve months. Um, nobody, I don't think any of the analysts, you know, fifteen months ago when Bitcoin was at its rise, were, any, were thinking of any numbers that, that we reached in, in in the end of twenty twenty two. Um. We quite rightly say, um, you know, we've had, we've seen some amazing pull up, but but bear in mind the the stock prices have dropped down, and I don't know how many investors were prepared to go in in December and buy stocks at those real, you know, whole, wholesale prices that they were. I mean, Argo had, had dropped to literally uh, thirty six cents a share, and we're seeing it now, you know, close to close to two dollars a share. So that's had a that's had a massive increase, uh, six hundred and you know nearly seven hundred percent. But it's you know would would people have been prepared to invest and take the gamble, knowing all the news that was out there, price of Bitcoin not not looking like it was going to turn, suddenly a bear cycle, and also all the other factors that affecting Argo at the time, um, regards to uh, finding you know further investment to help, and obviously they did have some good news in December and and. Um, Galaxy have come in and purchased the Helios site, sixty-five million, which has given the company some, you know, some more time to sort of navigate its its pathway um, through this year. So it's now going to be hosting most of its miners at Helios uh, under the new ownership there, and they've still got the two sites in Canada, about two and a, two and a half exahash of um, miners, and they've managed to reduce the debt a little bit. So the debt, I think. We go back to August last year. Debt was in excess of 100 million at that point in time. They still got uh, 40 million note uh, notes that were payable in a few years' time. That that's 
Um, that's still in place there, but they've now got a 35 million loan from Galaxy, which will help them give them some cash flow to get through this this period now. And if the Bitcoin price keeps rising, I think we'll we'll see Argo make make further recovery because it did drop down to literally very close to going into chapter 11. Mm -hmm. They were actually highlighting that in a number of their updates that it were close to if something didn't happen. Yeah, so so our our girls had a month, but 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 equally, um, Mar and Riot, the two the two um, biggest miners by market capitalization, I've had I've had a good period and you know well over a hundred percent increase in the last three weeks. Um, Riot actually now is the uh, is the largest uh, miner by by market capitalization. It's, it's hovering around that one billion, and Mar Marathon Digital is um, probably around about the nine hundred nine hundred million. So Riot's Riot's had a you know, had, 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 had a good good period. Um, it mined the most most Bitcoin in 2022 with um, you know, over 5,700 Bitcoin mined for the year there. Um, in December, it had a good had a good month mining 659 Bitcoin. It's still selling a bit of that past you know a good chunk of that Bitcoin it mines monthly. It's not going into the oddal. It's, it's selling monthly Bitcoin to pay for its um, operational and capital costs. Its current hodl is is just under seven thousand, and that's at, um, at the end of December valuations. They're not taking account the Bitcoin price. They was worth about one hundred fifteen million dollars in Bitcoin, and they've they've got about a similar amount in in cash, and and that two hundred or well, you know quarter of a billion there in, in, in liquidated assets is going to help them get their uh, expansion into their new sites. But Corsicana, mm -hmm. um, so you know, good period for them. Uh, Madison had a had a again. It was a probably from from an ardent shareholder, probably a, um, a disappointing month. Then they they mined four hundred and seventy five Bitcoin. Um, bear in mind, they got seven exahash. A lot of the issues in December. There were a lot of weather issues. So the last the last week in December for a lot of the miners was literally very little uh, production at all. Um, so, so marathon, marathon initial fell into into into, into that um, that challenge. They also had to curtail throughout the month because of energy prices. They don't have a fixed um, EPA, so they're reliant on spot prices. And when when the energy price increases during the during the day, they'll switch off their, their miners trying to try and save that that cost. Got a large huddle. Over twelve thousand coins. So you know, two at the end of December, that valuation was over two two hundred million. Um, and if you think now, that's probably over two hundred and fifty million in in, um, in 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 hodl. We are sort of seeing now that that it's, it's coming through that they are starting to to actually sell elements of their hodl, not not large amounts, but we're starting to see that come through now. People have had access to that marathon digital wallet, and they can see some of the sales coming through. So we'll expect end of the, end of uh, January that will be confirmed that they started to sell but they've got such a big hodl and what they did in december was they actually re, uh, reduced their leverage on some of their uh, bitcoin by repaying the rolling uh, loan with silvergate bank um which was 30, 30 million outstanding low so they've repaid that back they've still got a 50 million uh, loan um with silvergate and that's leveraged against Bitcoin, but they've managed to get their unrestricted Bitcoin back over sort of seven thousand coins now. So it's a good a good a good amount of Bitcoin they've got to use. Um in this current climate where, you know, mining rigs are are predominantly low. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, so so interesting from them there. Uh Riot benefited by again selling energy back to the grid. So they sold uh, energy back and received about four point nine million Dollars, and if we put that into Bitcoin term, that's like two hundred ninety Bitcoin um, equivalents. So if you if you factor that with what they actually mined and looked at, you know, and and compare that with what they would have mined had they had the machines on for the whole period, that would have been that's a better return than Bitcoin mining. They would have they would have they would have been the top miner by about twenty percent if they if they were able to um, utilize, you know, that, that amount of Bitcoin mining rather than turn the machines off. Um so, so it's been a it's been a good month for them. High high blockchain also were able to uh, receive money from that they are they actually um do some hedging around their energy energy costs. 
and they received about 3.15 million in savings uh, there. So that's that's benefited them. They also had to curtail, obviously, for, for that during that that period, and um, their production and their operational hash rate was lower than normal. Um, but they had strong strong performance with what they had available. So it was a good it was good month for Hive blockchain. Um, mine two hundred thirteen Bitcoin. They sold a, they sold quite a big chunk in 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 De- uh, December and November. We're not sure of what period because they didn't give their November um, sales updates uh, through. Um, but having having um, sent a few messages through to the management there, they were happy to start reinstating their Bitcoin hodl um for december so we were able to highlight quickly that they'd sold 1441 bitcoin over the last two months which is quite a sizable amount and the reason they sold is not about covering their current costs it's about having money ready to invest in opportunities so you can see that hive are looking to make good use of the current prices and start buying machines and, and it looks like they may also be looking to replace some of their older models in the, on their sites so that's that's positive news for, for, for hive they can get the, the prices now um i'm seeing that you know um sort of around the 15 tera hash for s90s that's something you confirm well your side yeah the the tera hash rate sounds right there the one thing i want to interject really quickly and just just ask you about uh, while we're going through these updates is the mining stocks um Based on what you're saying, like we've kind of gone through the updates, there's been some really positive gains, right? So Argo is able to uh, basically find its way through its situation. Core Scientific continues to mine through its chapter 11. We don't know what's going to happen there, but at least they're still online and mining, get, getting those cash flows. We saw uh, Riot continue to mine. It's it's opening up more of its Corsicana site. Marathon also with its applied blockchain site. I think they had changed the applied digital now. Uh, but they're still continuing online and, and operating. Seems like December was a great month for a lot of people. And that's maybe why you see things better in January. That being said, some have done better than others, right? And typically we see mining stocks trade within a, a very tight band of each other, right? They don't change that much more than the others. If one goes up, another goes up. But based on this last month, we've seen that some are just doing crazy numbers. I'm wondering why that is. From your from your perspective why are some teams like greenage up over 200 percent since year to date and then there's other miners who are down or not up as as highly what we've got to remember as well is that in 2022 the likes of the the ones that have done really really well so we're looking at the green age we're looking at argo both of these companies their share price was devastated in 2022 so they had you know they had not 80 to 7 drops in the share price they have like 95 percent drops in their share price and more you know core scientific 98 percent drop in its share price now core scientific because they're currently going through chapter 11 we're not seeing any real increases in their share price at all in january in fact it's been it probably been very very static um but Gren- greenwich and argo had so much potential from from getting above their really low prices i mean you know, at thirty for for a stock that went to IPO at fifteen dollars fifteen months ago and was down to thirty six cents in December, um, and now it's trading around about the two dollars um, a share. That's you know, it, it had to really get down to its lows to then bounce. Um, whereas other other mining stocks like Marathon and Riot um, didn't didn't go down by ninety percent. They went probably down by about eighty percent. So so there's a significant difference in 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 rebounding from eighty percent. There is rebounding from ninety five percent down. So you know you have to look at it. Um, I still think that investors are starting to get a little bit shrewd now. So they're they're not just looking at you know they want to know more about the mining companies, more about what they're doing from a produ- from a production stance, more about their cost of of mining. Really important. They've got good energy prices and that there's they're actually you know forecast to start making profits when the bitcoin price you know rises to a you know to a certain level to, to, to get to that point but then we're seeing other miners like clean spark that hasn't really has delivered great numbers all through the year so clean spark has been one of those sort of top four miners throughout 2022 from a production point of view and from a growth point of view number one they grew from something like under 2x a hash at the start of the year, finished the year at 
over 6x ash, fantastic growth, very little debt, but their share price has not has not reacted with that. And actually, they've got uh, they've got reasonable um, they've got they've got a reasonable low cost of, of Bitcoin, not the lowest cost of mining of Bitcoin, but it's 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 a profitable coin. So I'm going to look at you know reasons why. And I looked this morning at sort of what happened in 2022 with regards to um, the the amount of, um, of of ordinary shares for each of the companies. And actually, Clean Spark had, had increased um, their, uh, their their shares by seventy three percent, so they diluted significantly in twenty twenty two through that. And maybe that's an area where we've got institutional investors and some savvy investors, you know, who can, can be more looking into more of this data to determine whether they feel that you know if, if companies are going to continue to dilute. And believe you me, with the easy to have we debt over the last twelve months. There's really only dilution and um, and selling Bitcoin available as levers at the moment. It's going to be a, it's going to be a real real challenge for some miners. Maybe the dilution has, has put put some people off, um, where they're looking at you know other miners who've got like maybe Hot who've got a, the ability to they've got the hodl there, but we, equally they they diluted by thirty percent in the last twelve months. So we are seeing a, a few of these miners dilute. I look at their shares to, to make their ends meet during the period. Um, so it's, it's, it's interesting. Right, right share price hasn't, um, hasn't increased significantly compared to right in January, but it's still in a better position if you look at the last 13, 14 months, because right now is, is, is the largest, is the largest, um, is large rent by by income. And you know, if you go back twelve months ago, it was it was that was Mara by you know generally by quite quite a significant amount. So we've seen that turn around there. Bit farms, bit farms have um, had a good have had a good have had a, a great year consistently every month producing um, great production numbers. And um, they've got a great they've got a good low cost on their on their output as well. Um, they had significant amounts of debt back in. In their sort of May June of 2022, I think that was touching around 100 million in debt. But since then, they've done everything they can to reduce the debt on the balance sheet. So at the moment, it's down to 47 million. So they've got rid of 50 million of debt on the on, on the balance sheet, which is has been pretty good. And they've sold Bitcoin to do that. They've got 20 million at the moment with BlockFi um, through one of their subsidiary companies. So we we discussed in a previous. Um, podcast about um, Iris Energy, how they created an SPV for their mining rigs. Well, Bit Farms equally did something structured in a way that one of their subsidiaries um, has a loan for twenty million, and at, at the point in time in February twenty two, when the loan was taken out, mining machines were much more expensive than they are today. So the leverage worked quite well. They had sufficient leverage with the miners in place on the site, but with mining machines dropping now to sort of fifteen dollars a tera hash. That leverage is now worth five million. So Big Farms put out an update in December to say, sorry, in early January to say, we're going to have discussions with them with BlockFi to see if we can come up with a a more a better package based on the current current economic climate. And um, if those discussions can go ahead and all well and good, if, if they can't, that, then it's going to be a, a challenge to meet the payments, um, and therefore. They'll default on the payments, and and like Iris Energy did um, with Nidic, um, you know, it'll be a case of BlockFi taking over. I think some like six hundred petahash of miners at the site, that at one of the sites. So, one of the sort of nine or ten sites that Bit Farms have will will stop being operational. But as a, from a positive note from Bitcoin's side, it, it takes off twenty million off the off the off the balance sheet in debt mm -hmm. for the sake of for the sake of five million. Um, dollars worth of miners. Let's go back to BitFarms in a second. I want to ask uh, about dilution a little bit more because this is a pretty important subject, which I think is overlooked. And that's one thing I think I should do better in this podcast, honestly, when I have some of these executives on is talk more about the dilution role because oftentimes on Bitcoin, Twitter, or in forums, off, we only talk about selling Bitcoin or we talk about debt. We don't really talk about dilution too much. And I I don't know quite why that is. There doesn't seem to be a conversation around it, but it is important, right? I think yeah. part of the answer is because mining equities are so new as an instrument and a lot of people 
I think crypto are still understanding the role of equity within building a public company in Bitcoin or in crypto. So we're still sort of figuring out, is it okay? Is it not okay? When should it be used appropriately? And to your point, CleanSpark was a dominant miner in 2022. We expect the same in 2023, but they did dilute their shareholders quite a bit. And so did quite a few other miners during the bull run. What's your take on dilution going into 2023? Do you see other miners using that uh, lever, so to speak, in order to grow? Or do you think that dilution play is really done for the moment? No, it's not It's not done by a long street. Um, we're already seeing miners. miners. A lot of the miners have already got in place um, within their um, SEC updates, the ability to to um, sell more shares back to at the market prices. So um, Riot had a significant ATM in place um, and it was approved of their, of their, their shareholders meeting. Um, Big, Big Farms, I think early 2022 had, had a 500 million ATM in place. So not, not to sell in one go, but the opportunity to sell over a period of time, Clean Spark, want to put to their shareholders imminently um, a proposal which will give them the opportunity, I think for, so I think it's $500 million um, dollars of shares through an ATM. Um, so a- absolutely not. I think, I think um, you're going to see more, more dilution because the, I think the debt markets, there's two, two reasons, but until we see the full economic recovery and interest rates starting to come down, we're still seeing interest rates rise at the moment, especially on, on this side of the water. And I think even in the US, not, not seeing interest rates drop at the moment. Interest rates are high now because he's trying to combat the inflation issues that, that's globally um, at the moment. And so we see that, that come down, interest rates will stay high. And that means that if you want to borrow money, you're going to be paying more than you were 12 months ago. So those rates that were, when they started to come down a year ago and we were seeing miners paying, you know, a single digit interest rates of say you no know, eight, nine, ten percent, whereas previously they were paying 18, 19, 20 percent. We're not going to see those eight, nine, and ten percent in 2023 until we see market recovery and the interest rates coming down and the, the, the bank interest rates coming down, which will then, you know, make the commercial rates a little bit more attractive. So, dilution is absolutely one of the levers available for each of the mining companies to use and. and, and They'll all be, at some point in time, using that lever. The other option is obviously Bitcoin. And we've seen all the miners, apart from Hot and Marathon Digital, um, going to their hodl and sell significant amounts in in, 20, in 2022. And that's not going to change as well. We're already, we know Iris Energy sell every month, and that was their strategy. Sell sell the Bitcoin each month, grow, and then when they get to a growth position, they'll be able to produce more Bitcoin. And you know, they've benefited in 2022 from that strategy because we've seen the price come down. So they've had a they've had a you know, they've had a good average revenue coming through um over that period. Whereas if you look at those miners that were in trouble, so Argo and Bit Farms were in trouble with the debt and Greenwich were having to sell lots of Bitcoin just to, to at the wrong prices just to sort of, you know, get out of real trouble. Um, and even two of those miners have bought Bitcoin in sort of January 2022 when the price was $40,000 a you know, coin, having then to sell it months later for less than half that amount in price. So um, I think, you know, in answer to your question, dilution will definitely be a lever for 2023. It's, it's the only way these miners will, will, will be able to grow significantly. I love how you uh, how you analyze that because I think it's important to know that the selling of Bitcoin uh, and just holding Bitcoin on your balance sheet and then also using debt those are two very tied together. Uh, those are those two elements are tied together by macro forces, right? So like the cost of interest rates going up is a macro environment, and then the cost of Bitcoin and what price you're going to sell it at is also tied to macro as well. So dilution seems to be the only thing that's slightly different, right? Where you can dilute your customers and they're going to probably be upset, but at least you have like a little bit more strength there than necessarily the other two. Let's go back to the BitFarms conversation and talk about that. I think there's a few other miners that are in that category or bucket, uh, which we definitely just need to talk about for a little bit. And that's this debt issue. So Core Scientific obviously filed chapter 11 and they are 
right now figuring out what that looks like. They're still mining Bitcoin, but there's over, I think it's around a billion dollars in liabilities that they're sorting through right now. And we have BitFarms with its liabilities to NYDIG. Iris Energy obviously defaulted on that loan obligation through its SPV. So they're okay from a business standpoint since it was a separate entity, but necessarily was sort of a black mark on their uh, their look against you know, other creditors in the space. 100%. I, I, I wonder, and there's maybe a few other miners, I guess Argo is still technically in that bucket because they do have a loan out with Galaxy Digital now, but they seem to be more or less sorted. I'm curious about the debt position going into this next year. What's your thoughts looking at these different miners? What's going to happen with them? Um, I think we already we've already articulated that you know the big farms have reduced their debt significantly, and if you look at the market capitalizations of these companies, there is a sort of a correlation between the fact that those miners with 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 less debt and um, and the ability. So if you look at balance sheets, Hut Eight have had a strong balance sheet the last few years. You know they've modeled everything. Um, they have diluted. They have diluted the shares. But they've got very little debt on the balance sheet. They've got quite a lot of assets on the balance sheet. So their ability to meet their, you know, their current liabilities, um, they they do that, you know, pretty much within their gift. You know, it's it's it's, it's you know, it's, they're not having to repay the level some of the other miners are paying. Right, blockchain again, another. They're you know, they're, they're a bigger miner, and they've got you know very little debt on their balance sheet. So again, it's 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 using that you know opportunity to, you know, to grow with. Um, through dilution, and they're they're doing they're doing it steady. You know, they've, 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 a lot of work's been done on on the new site. I've been watching the updates um, that be coming out. They're putting a lot of updates about the new site on YouTube, and you know, it's starting to take shape. Just in the same way, you know, a year ago we were having the same conversations with Helios when that started to take shape, and these sites got you know really quickly. You know, once once the foundations are in there, they're, they're built. Their structures are built quite quickly, so. You know, we'll see. We'll see part of Corsicana going up in the you know in this next six months now, and you know by the end of the year they'll have probably, I think they're they're planning to have forty percent of that site completed and energized. So that's another four hundred megawatts of power on top of the seven hundred megawatts they've got at Windstone. So that's over a billion. Sorry, that's over a, a gigawatt of power energized, and that will put them you know um, up there as sort of like you know if not the top very close to the top of the tree from a mining perspective. It's going to be interesting watching what's going to happen over the next few months. We, 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 again, we're going to rely on the Bitcoin price. Everything rolls around Bitcoin price for these miners. Um, but if the price, if the Bitcoin price goes up and share prices go up, that will give these companies opportunities to dilute at a more reasonable, reasonable price. I mean, you know, half the miners in December were receiving notifications from the NASDAQ that they weren't meeting the requirements from, from a share price perspective. So you had even the big miners. So Bit Farms, their share price went below a, a dollar. Put Hates, share price went below a dollar. Argos went below a dollar for so many days that they were actually, you know, they were told by NASDAQ they had to um, meet the requirements by having their share price continually over a dollar for 10 days. And thankfully, the run in January, they've already achieved that. So they only got notified in December. But in, in January, they they already successfully achieved their 10 days above a dollar. So that they've met that condition of the NASDAQ. Um, so that's that's good. Bitfond's price has got above a dollar, but it is, it is only literally, you know, 20 cents above a dollar. So... But Tate's price is, is about two dollars a share now, so that sort of got them give them a bit of a breathing space. But that that's an issue for some of these miners. Um, we still got um, like the likes of DigiHost. Um, their share price has, has has done well, but they have quite a few days. They had a notification for the Nasdaq. Their share price is over a dollar at the moment, but um, it's uh, it's keeping it above a dollar, and we don't we don't know when the Bitcoin price is going to go. You know next week of mine yeah it might be a good time to talk about the likes of uh the digital and a few of these other miners according to the update which we'll link in today's show notes and this is yours from last month a few of these smaller miners are actually doing really well they're just they're coming out of this bear market uh, adding more hash rate they're scooping up cheap asics and doing quite well so i think bit digital is definitely one of them i think you listed as the fifth miner on your uh mining update yeah. 
DMG is there. And then one other that we don't have an update for yet, but likely will have this coming month is Cypher Mining, which uh, has also sort of come out of the woodwork as like a smaller miner that has set up shop in Texas, has been purchasing ASICs for cheap. We look forward to updates from them uh, adding to your monthly yeah. update. But tell me a little bit about these smaller miners. They don't have a lot of hash rate online yet, but they're growing steadily during a bear market. Well, we've we've seen um, we've seen uh, DMG were very. I mean, only one. If we look at the miners in my table, only one miner actually reached its um, strategic level for 2022. So we, you know its forecast growth level, and that was Clean Spark. But for looking at miners that were close, DMG were were really close to achieving their target of, of one exa hash. So they they got to like 900. And, 45 petahash, so they were they were quite close. They're only, you know, 55 petahash away, and that was due to a delayed delivery. So we're expecting, hopefully, in January for them to reach that. That's a, a big target for them, and they are one of the smaller miners. They did in November and December finish top of the um, production charts, so you know, getting the most out of their available hash rates. So they picked the likes of um, Bit Farms and Ivory predominantly for twelve months, along with Iris Energy and Clean Spot being the four, the four you know um, miners you know holding those top four positions literally every month. But DMG last two months have have, have had two great months, and, and you know whether they continue that we'll we'll, we'll see. Um, DigiHost had some good news in December with regards to New York and getting more uh, approvals to um, to get the site the site up and running there, which will provide a significant amount of um, of exahash. What I don't understand at the moment, I, I probably need to arrange a call with Michelle to get to the bottom, is is, is it's all right having the exahash, wh where the miners coming from, because I'm not seeing any sort of big purchase of miners. We're talking a significant amount of exahash available, I think. At the moment, they've got 650 petahash. But they're looking for New York to increase that to like two extra hash, and even to a sort of a, a minor like Clean Spark or Bit Farms, who tend to grow, you know, quite quickly. That's still a lot of capital involved to get 1.3 extra hash of miners, and um, you know, like their market capital at the moment is about 20, uh, sorry, about 30 million dollars. You know, for 1.3 of extra hash, well, that's 20 million dollars of, of of miners. So just need to understand it's all right having the signs with potential, but how are you going to how are you going to fill those sites with miners? Um, unless they're going to go down the hosting route. So it's not 100 percent clear what their strategy is going forward. But the good news was is that is the New York site. They they've confirmed that the approvals went through. There is an issue with regards to using the the type of energy there. There's been some I think there's been a a lawsuit not against DigiOaks, but against um against uh, the case New York as to why it's why it's been approved for them to have a, a, a Bitcoin miner operate in that jurisdiction with regards to the um with the amount of carbon that's going to be released on the type of energy they're using. Um but from DigiHost's perspective they're quite positive. Their update for December was very positive and um, they had a had a reasonably good month again. Um they're like DMG, both companies don't have any debt on the balance sheet, which is which is a positive thing. They are literally using an element of their mined Bitcoin to pay for their monthly costs. So again, they're living within their means. They're not having to go out there and you know create. And the Bitcoin increase in price in the last um, you know last three weeks will will help both of those companies by maybe hobbling a little bit more Bitcoin each month going forward. So if they're only like they were spending eight percent of their Bitcoin, that 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 number will drop drop down if they're having to meet the same amount of costs. So, um, Bit Digital had a good had a good month. We've already we were already covered the fact that they were they were fifth on, in the table. I had a message from their um, chief strategy officer, and I questioned the fact that you know in the update I'm only showing the, literally a third of their um, of their actual hash rate. So. They're looking to go out, at the moment, I think it's like 35% of their hash rates operational. And the remaining 65% are looking to, to come online. But they're also looking at the fact that it will come online when it's economically viable to do so. They don't want to rush out there and just switch everything on if the energy prices are going to be too expensive to to mine Bitcoin. So they're looking at it really from a, 
what's it going to what's it going to you know to, to cost us to to, to to switch on and um you know if it's within our if it's within our um our costs then they'll, they'll, they'll be able to you know gradually um get but the, but the plan is to get 100 percent absolutely gotcha so let's end the conversation with two questions one forward-looking statements as much as we can in the show just based on the public filings we have right now the information that they've released from the teams what are some trends or strong miners you're looking at for 2023 and then the last question i'll get to in a second but i just want to get a hash rate prediction from you i think we're going to see we're going to see much of the same there is there is sort of a there is sort of a um a gap appearing between those stronger miners um and when we're looking at stronger minds, we are looking at the the, the the ones with the stronger balance sheets who are able to you know to move on any opportunities very quickly. Um, so we really want to see you know cut eight increase their increase their hash rate, resolve the issues they've got with one of their sites in Ontario, and get 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 back back up and running. I think that's about a third of their of their operational hash rates down at the moment because they've got a dispute. Uh, with regards to energy prices, um, well, they're in a very strong position. They, you know, they've got probably close to two hundred million dollars available in liquidated and and cash to go out and and increase their hash rate. They haven't done it as expected in twenty twenty two, but twenty twenty three with the current prices now, um, you'd expect them to to start utilizing some of that to 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 build their build their their hash rates up. Bit farms. Um, Strong in 2022, uh, and I see them um, getting stronger. They, they, you know, they they reduce their their debt and put themselves into a much much better position going forward. Clean Spark they forecast a very challenging hash rate by the end of the year of 16 exa hash, and before it was about a few months ago, it was up to 20 exa hash, but they've reduced that to 16. So they're at six at the moment, six point two at the moment. That's another 10 exa hash this year. Um, they increased by four exa hash in. 2022 so that's 150 percent more than what they did in 2022 so that's going to be that's going to be interesting because if they haven't got the cash available so for them it will be um you know it will be dilution or it will be going to the to the um to the to the debt markets if, if that's if that becomes an opportunity but as they've already applied for a 500 million um atm which needs approval from the shareholders um that's probably the way that they're looking at this and um, they've diluted quite a lot in 2022. That will continue, but you know you've got to you've got to grow in this in this space. You need to grow through these bear bear markets now. Get ready this for when it, when things pick up. Um, and we are seeing a lot more miners go and join the global hash rate. You know, people were, we were seeing it stall towards the end of 2022, but actually it, it looks like it's picked up again. And difficulty. Um, went up um, in January, um, and I'm hearing from Asia. I'm in touch with a couple of miners in Kazakhstan that they're switching on now over there. So, you know, with with Bitcoin price increasing, it's going to be start becoming a little bit more profitable. So more miners will join that will join the will join the um, will join the network, and obviously that that will bring difficulty. And you know, miner will have to grow just to keep up. So it's going to be a challenge, but. I think that if you look at the likes of Riot, look at the likes of Mara, look at the likes of Butt, Bit Farms, um, high blockchain, got very little debt on their balance sheets. They're not getting the revenues from the Ethereum that they were getting uh, last year. And from a revenue perspective, I think Hive actually got more revenue than all the mining companies. Um, so they'll need to replace that revenue. Um, and they obviously, they spent 2022 increasing their Bitcoin mining hash rate. And that, that they plan to to continue to do that, but it's going to, you know, it's, it's it's a case of how they do that. They've got, um, still got about uh, two and a half, nearly two and a half thousand Bitcoin on the, on the balance sheet. They've got some cash as well. Um, they've got a new CEO, so Aiden Aiden and the, the chief operating officer took over as CEO um, earlier this month. Um, he's been in the role for eighteen months as CEO, and effectively that he was putting that role there to prove himself ready in readiness to take over from from um, from from Frank um and become CEO and that and that was announced um just over a week ago. So that's that's a that's a good sign for High. He's been heavily involved in all the strategy that they they've been going through over the last last eighteen months and um they're in a good position. So, you know, 
Um, mine is that we'll, we'll still find it challenging in 2023. Um, Argo is certainly not out of the woods. Core Scientific in Chapter 11 doesn't mean it's the end of Core Scientific. They're still producing monster amounts of Bitcoin on a daily basis. I think in excess of 50 Bitcoin on a daily basis. Still apparently switching on more miners. So Chapter 11, it just gives, it's, it's about looking at how we can reorganize. Is an opportunity to reorganize, um, you know, debt. Um, it really depends how those discussions go. Um, but they, you know, they're 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 they're, they're a, you know a, a, just a, a massive miner. Um, if you look at the fact that DigiHost mined 50, uh, 50 Bitcoin during the month of December. And core scientific do that on a daily basis, so you know it's it's <laughs> fair here. And, yeah, and it, but if we look at the um, if we look at the um, uh, the the market capitalization, DigiHost is thirty one million dollars, uh, and core scientific is thirty four million dollars. And um, so you know, DigiHost is sort of on a par with core scientific from a valuation, but delivering about three percent of the of the amount of Bitcoin on a daily basis. So, um, you know, that can do that to you. That can do that. And, and we've said, we've said all along that no one's too big to fall mm. and core scientific effectively being the biggest miner for the last 12, 18 months did fall. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we'll, last we'll, question. See. we'll see. We'll see. Last question for you. End of year project projection for hash rate. So December 31st, 2023. What do you think the network hash rate is at? So far, we've gotten guesses around 350x a hash, and currently we're around 260, 270, depending on the day. Yeah, I think I revised. I revised mine. I think it was. I think it was 275 for 2020. So I'm, I'm probably going to say 3, 325 to 350 is probably sensible. But um, you know, as as the, as Bitcoin price, if we if we, I mean, the cycles the cycles just we're not quite ready for the bull market yet. So, um, and we, you know, it, 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 although we only have four, this is our fourth cycle, it's not a, a massive amount of historic, historic data to look at, but it's been very cyclical in those, in, in those, in those cycles. So, it, you know, um, it, it just see, it'll all depend on, 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 on two factors. It'd be on Bitcoin price and energy prices. If, if it's possible to mine, you'll get more miners switching on, making the difficulty harder. So that you, you know, Higher global hash rate, um, but if if um, if Bitcoin drops again, um, and as I say, it won't, we'll we'll see the hash rate come down because more miners will be switching off. Um, they, they, you know, the miners, you know, if you get the likes of Mara who are switching off on a daily basis just to avoid high spot prices, this is this is a sort of strategies that some of these miners or most of these miners that haven't got fixed. Fixed prices in place. That, that's what they're going to have to have to consider more and more of. Uh, and we're seeing that. We're seeing. We're seeing. Even though the difficulty dropped in December compared to November, we saw most of the miners have lower daily output. So that that says you know um, you know miners were having to switch off. And yes, the weather was was responsible for some of that. Mm -hmm. But some of the miners in, in the US will switch off because of because of energy prices. I think it's a pretty fair estimation. I remember last year this time we did the same thing. We did a guess for end of your hash rate. And the most bullish we're saying 350 by the end of 2022. We we ended around 270, 250, depending on which measurement you're going to use. But I think 325 to 350 is is about where most people are placing it. Anthony, I want to thank you for joining the Mining Pod. We will see you again next month. And for everyone who is listening, be sure to check out Mining Memo, our newsletter, which Anthony publishes his uh, monthly updates on miners. And he also publishes a few different pieces uh, on mining, miner analysis, uh, which are always great to read. Thank you again, Anthony. Thanks. Thank you.